think the society has to come to a thresh threshold where there's some people that aren't worth saving. We need to build warehouses to put these people into it and lock them away for the rest of their lives. Let's put them in jail. Let's, let's stop them from truly, at least some of these males, going out and getting 10 other women pregnant and having small children. Let's put them away. At some point, we have to stop being politically correct. And I don't care what race, I don't care how old they are. If there's a threshold that they cross, these people have to be warehoused. No recreational time in the jails. We put them away. We put them away for the rest of their lives so that the rest of us can be better. But there's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason for this. There's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, <laughs> lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table to figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. An era in which the nations of the world, East and West, North and South, can prosper and live in harmony. A hundred generations have searched for this elusive path to peace, while a thousand wars raged across the span of human endeavor. And today that new world is struggling to be born. A world quite different from the one we've known. A world where the rule of law supplants the rule of the jungle. A world in which nations recognize the shared responsibility for freedom and justice. A world where the strong respect the rights of the weak.
political organization is based on the nation. The economic organization of the world attempts to achieve globalization, which means it transcends uh, uh, borders. So there are very many profound challenges today. Uh, so what I'm attempting to do in the book is to say here is where this idea of order started. Sooner or later, we will come to some concept of order because without it, there will be no principles to govern conduct and there will be no restraint on the exercise of power. Now, how we get there, uh, that is the big challenge because for us in America, we have believed that our principles are the universal principles that everybody must accept. Uh, and I, as an individual, believe that they are universal principles. But how to relate this to other societies who have comparable views? That is one of the great challenges we face. <laughs>
America can fill and finish in these pre-filled syringes as many of the drugs as we need for U.S. citizens and eventually to have excess to export worldwide. Our goal is to make sure that on American soil, we have everything we need to protect America. When do you think you might start, vi start filling these with the vaccine? Well, the president has said that that vaccine will be ready this year. So if that vaccine shows up at our door, we're going to be ready to fill it as soon as it does. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. <laughs>